Hello and welcome to SaurabhSchool.org. So in today's lecture we will study about arrays. So this is lesson 2 on arrays. So here we will learn about initialization. Initialization of array. So what it means? So last time we saw that we defined arrays like if I said int num 6 so it means I have 6 integer variables and they are indexed from 0 to 5 and so memory is allocated for all of these uh, in a static manner and so what happens now is if want to initialize so if we don't initialize this so now there might be some garbage values so let's draw some memory map so how the array looks in the memory so let's see so we assume that array is say that integer is of 4 byte so and in one memory location 8 bits or 1 byte is stored so let's say we write this is the memory location so let's say we have something like 0x 100 and then 0x 104 so these are the memory locations and what happens now is so let's see so if we have num6 so it means now what happens is so let's have this also so these are the six memory locations and they are differ by four bytes so what happens now is so num6 so it means the memory location for six integer elements are stored allocated in the memory and they have some garbage value here so in all those memory location so one thing is that how to initialize and the other thing is how to give certain values to different array elements so let's say so we have now here num 0 num 1 num 2 and till num 6 so one thing is that I can take each of the element and I can assign them some value let's say num 0 is 5 num 1 is 2 num 2 is 105 and num 6 is 25 and similarly num 3 is 28 num 4 is 32 and in fact there will be no num 6 because it the index is from 0 1 till 5 when there are the maximum value is 6 so this will be 5 so now what happens is num 0 is 5 so this is allocated so this is let's say this is num of 0 this is num of 1 num of 2 and till num of 5 so what happens is num 0 is allocated 5 num 1 is 2 num 2 is 105 num 3 is 28 num 4 32 and num 5 is 25 so this way values are assigned but this is again we are accessing each elements at a time but I want to initialize at the declaration and the definition itself so what do we need to do so here there is a very simple way so what we do is something like this so I write say let's say I'm defining a new one int val 
3 so it means what I have an integer array which has three elements val 0 val 1 and val 2 so I can initialize different values like 1 20 and 36 like this in curly bracket so what this statement mean is now I have val of 0 is equal to 1 val of 1 is equal to 20 and val of 2 is equal to 36 so this is a precise way of writing if I know the value beforehand itself and another helpful thing is that okay if I just want to initialize all the values by some number let's say 0 so I can write int value 5 is equal to in curly brackets just 1 0 so what it means now is that value 0 is equal to value 1 is equal to value 2 and it is all equal to value 4 is equal to 0. So all of them are assigned and initialized with value 0. So this is the way to initialize arrays. So now let's move on and let's see. So its basic idea is that I say that type, type of the array, data type, then the array name and then I say the what is the size so this is we declare and to initialize we say list of all values so list of values is assigned here so this so let's see some more examples and take one float example so I want to have an array of float of some total and let's say it is 5 so I have 5 elements and now I assign total 0 equal to 0 0.2 to total 1 is equal to 0 0.31 total 2 is equal to 1.23 total 3 is equal to 5.68 and total 4 is equal to 1.273 so this way I can assign so which means now let's say so total 3 is now so this is 0 1 2 3 so this will be equal to 5.68 so this becomes now very simple to initialize the values so let's say how to what does this mean so let's see another example so I write care name and I don't give any index here so it means I don't have a maximum limit and then I write something like J O H and N followed by slash zero so what it means now is that because I have not defined the maximum elements so it will take enough enough memory will be allocated to store all these values so here we see so we have j o h n and then a slash zero which means the character string has ended so it will be the size will be 5 so this enough space for care name 5 so this is similar to storing 5 character arrays so another way of writing this is care name 2 is equal to and then I can write j o h n so now this is exactly similar because if I write like this so now again so name to 0 is j 
name to one is O. Similarly, name to three is N, and name to four is equal to slash zero. So this is the initialization of character array. So let's move on. So now what happens? Let's see another interesting example, which is int num five. But I initialize only let's say ten and twenty. So I just initialize two values. So in this case, what happens is that the first two elements, so num of zero will be ten, num of one will be twenty. So what happens to the other elements which are not initialized? So for this partial initialization, so others are assigned value zero. So this means num of two is equal to num of three is equal to num of four is equal to zero. So and similarly, let's say if it is character array, so let's say char city 5 is equal to just b this means just the now the city 0 is b and all others city 1 city 2 etc till city 4 will be null they are all null. And but one more thing so if you have less numbers, then it is fine. But now let's say I define int num 3 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, like this. So this is illegal because I have allocated memory only for three elements and now I'm initializing five elements so this is illegal and it will not compile at all so this will give a compilation error and so we should remember this one but again so this is the case but let's say we are doing so I have defined int num5 and if I access let's say num of 12 so this is perfectly legal in C. So it will allow the access, but it will be you now some kind of runtime error will be happening. So there is no bound check. Bound check does not happen in C. So even if I have defined int num5 and if I try to access num12, I will get some value and even I can assign num12 is equal to 28. That is also legal code, but it might have some huge problem while at the runtime because it can go to some other memory where it is allocated for some different variable and it can destroy that. So now let's come to two dimensional array. So what is two dimensional array? So let's, so all of us know about matrix. So let's say we have a two dimensional matrix where we write 1, 4, 5, 3, 6, 8, 9, 7, 1. So it is a 3 cross 3 matrix. And let's say I want to represent this again very logically as array so till now we have just read about single dimensional array so in which case i know that okay a three cross three matrix has nine elements so one thing is that if there is just one dimensional array so i will have int let's say mat and i can define nine but again this is not so logical as a two dimensional i'm changing the two dimension into one dimension so something better would be like if I have int mat 3 
3 3 so this now completely matches with my matrix representation where I say that okay a i j we write as subscript so which means i means here the ith row and j means the jth column so here this is quite mapping with the subscript notation so we have mat 3 3 which means i have elements like mat so first row is 0 and first column is 0 so this is mat 0 0 and let's say this one so what is this so this is mat so this is in the second row so it starts index starts from 0 so second row will be 1 mat 1 and then the last column is third column which will be 0 1 and 2 so mat 1 comma 2 so this is two dimensional matrix accessing so this way we access the different elements so let's access let's say this one so what is this so this is so the 0th row first row second row 0th column first column second column so this is now 2 1 so it will be mat 2 1 and which is equal to 7 so this is about two dimensional matrix and how to initialize so let's see how we initialize the two dimensional matrix so if we had to write this matrix so i will have written int mat 3 3 is equal to so i will write something like so first row will be represented in another braces open 1 4 5 braces closed comma 3 6 8 then 9 7 1 so this way we can write a two initialize a two dimensional matrix where each row which has three elements is given by inner braces and so we have three rows here and it is represented like this so this ends our lecture on two dimensional matrix if you like this video lecture so you can subs go to www.saurabhschool.org and if you like this video you can subscribe to the video channel our video channel thanks a lot